Welcome to the Heron Heads podcast. My name is Julio, and I'm joined today by some friends and fellow Inter Miami fans, Dave, Chris, and Jose. And on behalf of the guys, we want to thank you for joining us for episode 38 here on the Heron Heads podcast, your first stop for all things Inter Miami. For those of you watching on YouTube, thanks for stopping by, and make sure you hit the like and subscribe buttons if you're enjoying the show. Before we begin, a huge shout out to our chief Heron Head, Matias. Thank you so much for your continued generous support. And additionally, thank you to our other Heron Heads, Art, Brian, Kevin, James, and Karen. Uh, thank you for your continued support as well. And if you feel so inclined to support us on Patreon, you will find a link in the description wherever you are listening. And if you don't feel so inclined, that's okay too. We appreciate you being here. All right, guys, it's been quite a while since uh, our last episode. A lot has happened. Uh, Jose welcomed a new baby. I've made a career change. We said goodbye to 2023. We said hello to Luis Suarez. And with that said, you know, we're a few weeks away from a return to action for Inter Miami. So how how are we feeling, guys? Well, happy, happy new year. I don't know if I've said that to all of you, but you know, here we are. Yeah, happy new year, guys. Um it feels good. We spent a lot of time last season talking about what this team would look like going forward. So we we knew Luis Suarez was always just around the corner. But we didn't really know uh, what else was going to be involved. We wanted some defenders, but we didn't know uh, who would be really leaving. Uh, so now we have a little better idea of what they're targeting to bring on. And some surprises, I think, uh, with uh, some of the choices they made with people who are going to be heading out. So with that, getting, with that being said, who wants to talk about some of the new additions and some of the rumored new additions? I do. Yeah, I'm excited. Okay, I'm, excited. Like, Jeez. <laughs> I'm excited about Luis Suarez. Uh, that's that, that's something that we we saw coming. Um, but uh, yeah, that's that's gonna be fun. Didn't even give us a chance to say Happy New Year. How's everyone doing? I mean, How many uh, times you have to do straight into the business? Said Happy New Year once. Dave's, Dave's been chomping at the bit for months. Yeah, yeah I'm ready to go, guys. I don't know about He's you. Ready but it's to time, go it's on time the horn. <laughs> Yeah, man, there's been some good additions, it seems like. Obviously, Luis Suarez is the main one. Um, but some some good additions, some questionable non-additions or things that haven't been uh, uh, looked at. Just big elephant in the room is the defense, right? Um, seems like we've subtracted from the defense at this point, and we're still waiting for that defensive piece that, that everyone was talking about at the end of last year that we may need. So I think that's still a big question mark. But but man, our attack has gotten a lot better um, on paper, right? right? Out in training, yeah, we haven't seen anything about them yet. But on paper, this attack looks much much better. Uh, it looks like that that could do a lot more this coming year. You know, like David said, we spoke about all season, last or the second half of the season, um, what this team could be, what this team could be, because we were only seeing a piece of it, right? We only saw the ending portion of the season, and we obviously didn't get to the playoffs, so. We couldn't see any more than that. So I think right now, this month, we have a lot of friendlies coming up that we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, that we're really going to start seeing this team together and, and kind of gel and, and see what's really what, what the finished product is that that Tata and Beckham and Mas have have created over here in Miami. But I mean, we have two signings on this club so far. We have we have uh, Luis Suarez, of course. Everybody knows the big the big ticket name, but. They got Julian Gress uh, Gressel from from Columbus. That's the, the the team that won the league, and that I don't think that's a signing that should be overlooked. Uh, I think he's a two way player. They can kind of really move him around in their formations. They can put him in the wing. They can play in the midfield. He can also play a little bit of fullback. So that's that's a position that's going to give a lot of versatility to Tata. So that's an, that's a signing that I'm really excited about because he can do so much and he's a proven player in this league. Because it's one thing to bring in a lot of players from outside of this league and hope that their their talent translates, but the MLS has proven to be its own little beast. And yes, Messi transcends everything, but you kind of have to have some players who know how to play in this league and what works and are familiar with each team and each opponent. So I think that's a, a huge addition to this club. So I think adding Gressel is, is going to be it's going to be good. Is that finalized the, i was no. just gonna say the gross edition isn't finalized yeah 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 we're no, just close we're close to signing we're right? close exactly yeah. yeah as of this moment he's still technically like 
I don't think he's a is a Columbus crew member. I think that, that his contract expired. But, but yeah. Yeah. Um, I think what Chris brought up as far as we're going to start to see a lot of friendlies coming out and seeing the team gel. Um, it's something I'm really excited for is for 2024, having a full season under Tata with all these pieces and being able to build chemistry. I mean, every week it felt like we had a different team and it wasn't even every week because we were playing every three days, which, you know, to an extent might be the same case, but we were seeing a different squad almost every single match. And it was so hard to say, oh, like Faku is the best. Uh, midfielder or we want to see David Ruiz more or we want to see Crema it was so hard to like develop any sort of consistency and that's something I'm really looking forward to especially as we get through the friendlies and into the start of the MLS season but let's still talk about people who are hopping on right and maybe some of these rumored hop-ons right tell us who's anybody who's, else who's the hottest name me? who's the so hottest me, I'm, name, David? I'm the one with his, his finger you're, on the, hot you're the fabricio romano of this podcast oh, okay here we go here we go so we we he, somebody that we also talked about a you're lot doomed. was uh, leandro gonzalez Pires. he's a former i think he he we own the rights to him and we had Correct. him loaned out to uh river plate so we're trying to get him back so that's that's one center back that could really help he he actually we loaned him out over there he wasn't playing regularly and by the end of the season, I'm pretty sure that they won their league and he was a mainstay in their defense. So that's 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 really good. If we can get uh, him back, that'll be great. And then we've also been linked to another center back uh, for Botafogo. Uh, man, Victor. What, his name is this? Victor. Yeah. What's his Cuesta. last name? Victor Cuesta. Cuesta. Yes. It's another, another Argentinian. He's played a lot. I think seven or eight years in the Argentinian league. He's played now seven or eight years in the Brazilian league. So... He's not the youngest player. He's 35 years old, but another established veteran center back to to this defense. Um, we'll see. I'm not sure his his form. I will we'll have to to see him in in the in the team. I don't know if he's going to be more of a of a a Kristoff type or if he's more um, more like Miller or maybe a little bit in the middle. But we'll see. The main thing is getting more more pieces in this defense because. We were just bereft. We had no depth because we had a lot of young guys that were hurt. And then there was just three center backs and we had to rotate them. So hopefully we'll get some of these bodies in here and, and hopefully some of them are pretty good. I think the, the problem is also that a lot of our defense was very slow. Um, when we talk about what our weakness was last year, we, we always talked about, yeah, I mean, well, I always talked about let's keep possession. Why? Because we we're very concerned about a turnover and then all of a sudden, our, our, our biggest Achilles heel was that them turning the field and getting us on a nice, you know, I don't know, and putting, putting it to us just that, that way, just our mistakes. But if we had a center back that could possibly cover for those mistakes, Kristoff is not fast by any means. We don't have a lot of fast center backs in general. Uh, I was hoping that maybe we can, we can add some, some backs as well, because right now our wing backs, we saw last year when Alba went down, who replaced him? Noah Allen, Yedlin on on, on a, a right wing back. It was it was terrible. He he he's getting older. It, it was one of those things where we we got outclassed in, on that trophy final. Um, it's just you know that that those are things that I wish we would have kind of paid more attention to. And we doesn't look like we're gonna do it. The, everyone you mentioned there is is a nice center back addition, David. But like ultimately, like I felt like that was also like our weakness. So. It's still our weakness, you know. Um, he, he did very good for, for for River Play, so I'm excited to see what he can bring here. And Dada seems to like him, so let's let's see how, how he if, if we can get him. If we can get him on another board. another thing is getting all these guys within the system for an entire offseason program and playing through these friendlies because Tata was kind of thrown into it with a mishmash, mishmash group of guys that he didn't really put together. So it does help that he's going to be from the get-go picking players that he thinks will fit his scheme more and will be fully bought in and engaged. So that's that's something to keep in mind that, yes, they might not be the most agile, the most the most pacey center backs, but if they fit the system better and they can play within the scheme or they're more familiar with the scheme, it kind of makes up for it. If you if you know what you're doing, you just you don't think, you just do, and it, and it helps you play a little faster. Um, so hopefully these guys can get together and they'll pick players that make sense 
and we won't have to deal with a lot of these mish- mishmash of players out of position and things like that that we're, we're really seeing on a regular basis before. Yeah, I think I like that topic or the topic you brought up of Julian Gressel. I think that's going to be a very interesting piece if it does happen. Knock on wood, hopefully it does. Um, I think it's going to allow the offense or the attack to do what they really want to do. Yedlin right now at the right wing back is kind of limited, I guess we could say. We kind of know what he what he does. His attack isn't great. He's fast enough to get back on defense when needed. Um, but I think Julian Gressel might give us that that extra oomph that we need in the right wing back to to complement Messi at, at the right wing right? or kind of like that, that centerpiece. Um, so it's going to be interesting if we do add him. Now, you said um, we need to give them time to to acclimate to this team and, and to, to the training program. I mean, we're already in January, you know. Um, I think the more we wait, the the more interesting it's going to be. You know, these friendlies are coming up soon. At the end of the month, they start – or mid-month, no? January – yeah, 19th, we have the, the first, first friendly is yeah. on the 19th. Uh, yeah, but before so they're, we get they're to that, trying to roll around. Yeah, before we so get to that, I'm really disappointed that um, they're getting rid of Kamal Miller. Kamal Miller is going to a different team. I thought of all the center backs, he was a good mix of some veteran experience mixed with a decent defender. He wasn't the paciest, but he was still probably one of our faster center backs. Kristoff wasn't, yeah. you know, charging back, and Toto's young and has energy, but he was as fast as Kamal. But Kamal had his moments where he like really was like passionate, and I felt like he brought a lot of energy and he commanded the back. Um, I was very disappointed to see him go. He's but, a rigor. Yeah, I mean, he had a stretch where he was like high stepping and just pumping just up the crowd, and bumbling and, through the middle, just you know, see what happens. It was you know? great. Yeah, he would run up. I mean, he took a how many shot? times did he? <laughs> yeah, how many times did he, he rumble back down to to defense and catch up to yeah. to the sprint? Yeah. And he I remember that. Well, when I David and times. I went to the Kansas City match, and he he made a block that saved us those three points because mm-hmm. it was an on target shot, and he was the only person within earshot of that, and he got in front of it. I mean, he was a good defender. His positioning was good. He got beat a lot, just like a lot of our defenders. But I think that was a byproduct of players not understanding the system really well. And towards the end, we really just, we ran out of steam. Um, I was disappointed to see him uh, go, Uh, you know, hopefully some of these new defenders are able to step in, in place. And if we continue to play a three or five at the back, you know, I I like the idea of Gressel and Yedlin sort of splitting time on the right. And then, you know, Jordy hopefully will be able to play a lot of minutes, but I mean, we still need more depth. Like we need better than Noah Allen on the left. Um, we need a third center back because right now we have Toto and Kristoff, and that doesn't fill me with a, a ton of confidence. You know, maybe we get no who are we putting back there, Frey, Sailor. You know, I, I just don't really know who we're putting back there right now. That McVay. gives you a lot of confidence. Yeah, there, I think I think that I think the club's high on McVay. I I really do. I mean, I hope they're 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 right for it. But it's been a while since he got consistent minutes. So, um, you know, they're they're trying to make moves. And to an extent, we have to wait these next couple of weeks and see what happens because really the, the global transfer market really just opened up. And we really start to see now a lot of transactions. So, you know, the month of December is kind of just like sleepy and you get a lot of rumors. But now we're starting to see things actually happen. And over the next few days, over the next couple of weeks, I think we'll see a lot of these questions be answered. Uh, more I mean, yeah, and Kamal Miller's and, uh, allocation money. It's, we're going to spend it. You know, it, it is what it is. We haven't he, we haven't seen anything by this owner group that they're not going to use the money that's given to them. So well, that's it, that's how they're signing Luis Suarez. The allocation money. Uh, he's not he's not a DP signing. Their their three DP signings are are full. So they're they're signing Luis Suarez with that with that TAM that TAM money. So he's getting two hundred thousand dollars this year, and that's I mean that's a bargain. But that's why they're. I think that's why they they're kind of saying, okay, let's let's get rid of Kamal Miller, free up some of that money that we can spend, and but yeah, it, it's it hurts the defense. Like the, that's the thing that the players that are leaving or rumored to leave are all defensive players. It's Kamal Miller. Um, they're Dixon Arroyo's gone because he he didn't resign. He didn't pick up his his uh, option, and and they're rumored to get to be shopping uh, Gregory. Who is who is a DP? So if they do um, move Gregory, 
it'll be interesting to see what they have in mind to replace that spot because you can't I don't think you can let him walk and not have a replacement in mind. The crazy part of that is that we had just extended his contract and he was to start the season the captain. I feel like all those things combined, I that one alongside the Kamal Miller uh it transaction, they I just yeah, they just stung a little bit. I, I get it. It's part of the business. It's part of the, the process of becoming better. Cause I mean, like he was the captain of the worst team in the league, but at the same time, when he came back, you saw his talent and he did a lot of really yeah. good things. He had a very high engine, got the ball back in midfield a lot and progressed the ball forward really, really well. Um, his passing ability was, you know, a standard, very, very good but, incisive passes that we hadn't seen in the midfield without Messi on the, yeah, on the pitch. Yeah. A lot of composure, but it does seem like we're just collecting funds. I mean, even in the super draft, we traded our pick for allocation money. So it does seem like we're preparing for maybe like a bigger move or bigger names. And even if it's not the level of like an Alba or Busquets or Suarez, um, you know, it could be just some really nice pieces that are established names in their domestic leagues, leagues, whether it's the Argentinian league or the Brazilian league, you know, it seems like a lot of the scouting that's been done by this club has been in the Americas, which is fine. I mean, that's a physical brand of soccer usually. Um, so I think it suits us very well, uh, but it's really interesting. The moves that they have made have been sort of geared at collecting, you know, like a, like a big bank role. And let's we'll let's see how they spend it. We already used our, uh, up our Barcelona theater program. I mean, there's how many players you're gonna get, you know. So at that point, we gotta get some guys from South America. You know? so we, can, we need we need guys from all over the place, you know. It's true. It's yeah, true. That's, that's that's why I thought that they were they were gonna for sure get uh, Nico Nico Lodero. I'm like, oh, so they they get Luis Suarez, so they get the best and, Uruguayan striker. Of all time, I don't care about Forlang. It's it's Luis Suarez because he played for Miami and nobody else did. So they had Luis Suarez, and you think, oh, perfect, they're gonna pair him up with one of his countrymen. And I, I had just started talking to somebody about about our, our about our show, and I was like, yeah, and I'm pretending to be an insider. I'm like, yeah, uh, Nico Lodero is gonna sign any day now. And not 20 minutes pass by, and he signs with Orlando. And I had to message him, and I was like, yeah, I don't know what you. I'm talking about. <laughs> so what you're saying is that you're admitting to being the reason why he didn't sign. Yeah, I, I mean, I jinxed it, guys. I'm sorry. Uh, but you know and what? I'm not sorry because we never wanted him. We don't need him. He can, he can go to Orlando and drink their nasty water, and that's what he's going to have to live with now. That's right. Sulfur water for the rest of his life. Yeah, something tells me he's not going to be doing that. He's going to go. To, he's going to have some pana, you know, some Evian. He'll he'll, he'll be fine. Yeah, well, some he's going he's he's gonna gonna irrigate, to he's gonna irrigate his lawn with that water. He's going to smell it one. Let's way just say other. I don't want to talk about him anymore up until the preview of Orlando, and then I'm going to say that their fans are overrated. So, <laughs> love it, love it. Uh, yeah, Lodero would have, would have been a nice piece. Um, veteran, a lot of experience in the league, has been part of championship clubs. Um, you know, it would have been nice. It, it it's always would have been nice because the people that we're linked with are people that would benefit our team. And you just goes to show you Orlando signed him for a reason. And Orlando was already a very successful club last season. Um, so, you know, disappointing, but you know, there's other names on the list. So I think it's just on to the next one for this club, for this front office. And the next 10 to 15 days are going to be super interesting. We're going to see a lot of rumors, a lot of transactions, and we're going to get a lot of answers on is Gregory leaving or was it just a rumor that we shoot down? Um, you know, what's going to happen with Arroyo? He declined the option, but does anyone pick him up? Do we pick him back up for less? I don't know. Does that happen? Um, it's just, it, it's the best time. It's everyone is on a level playing field. The season hasn't started. Everyone's healthy and it's just time to, to dream. It's, it's beautiful. Oh, yeah. Julio, I, I, everything that they're doing right now is just it just screams who cares about defense. And you know what? Let's just do that. Who cares about defense? Whoever we have, we have. We're never going to have to play defense. Let's just let's do this. Make me happy. Don't even don't, don't even care about anybody else. Just make me happy. Get Robert Taylor off as well. Ship him away with Gregory. And what we'll do is let's get a winger that will actually do, be a winger, you know, and, and, and God forbid score some goals. And yeah, let's 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 just play offense. That's fine. We'll we'll have uh, Cavender Pelton and Robert Taylor attack, man. 
we'll have, have to shoehorn it in. Yeah, I had to say. Let's just have Calendar pelted back there and see what happens and, and pray that he doesn't, you know, let one go right in, right in between his legs. But, yeah, I, I don't think it might. Honestly, uh, I, I think the way problem. that <laughs> Calendar blew it at the end of the year. Let's I don't want to hear, I don't wanna hear the Drake slander, please. Not oh, my to, God. Let's not start. You know, you're right. Let's not talk about it because we all know what <laughs> happened. Like, I fumbled the, towards the end of the year. It is what it is. Um, I was actually sad. The the uh, LA, it was LAFC that they just signed the, the goalkeeper. I think it was from Man City. Hugo, Lloris. Hugo Lloris. Lloris. Okay. Lloris. No, no, he's talking about Stefan. He's talking about Stefan. Loris started signed with, with LAFC. 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 Stephen, That's who he's talking Stephen. about. No, but he he said Man City. So no, I, there, there's two. I, I'm conf- I'm confusing Stephen. both of them. Stefan and, and, signed with the Galaxy, I think. And and I wait, was it the Galaxy? I don't know. Stefan did sign with the team in the MLS. This but isn't Maurice this signed with the uh, guys. It doesn't matter. We're playing offense only. But my point is that would have been great when I when I saw well, Jody enter the league. I was like, this is great. This is the this is the Messi effect. We're just we're going out there. These guys are all in the MLS, just grabbing people. You know, big names that are that still got some in the tank. I, I thought it was great. Yeah, I totally Stephen. agree. Stefan went to Colorado, by the way. You were so off. Well, he, um, man, but, he said Man City and Loris, and it threw me off. I don't know what David's talking about. I'm only exactly. talking about Hugo Lloris. I knew what you were talking about. I yeah, but I but I think to your point, we we've seen it with the Saudi League, and we've seen the Ronaldo effect over there, and how so many players started going over there. Granted, they're paying them exorbitant amounts of money, but you start having the attention being drawn to a league and. You know whether it's money or otherwise, you start going there and people start flocking there, and hopefully it builds a, more attention to the league. And you know if you have a competent uh, leadership group of the league, unlike MLS in some cases, uh, you know you can see real growth and real progression for the league up the the ranks and the reputation that the league has worldwide. And and then it's just a cycle. It's just oh I like I dream of playing in the MLS for the MLS Cup, and you know. You, you, there will always be the prestige of the Champions League in Europe and you know playing for some of these legacy clubs that have just over a hundred years of crazy history. But you know, you, you have to start somewhere. And the MLS is a relatively young league in the world, and this is the natural progression of things, especially nowadays. But they I totally to think it's a messy effect. They do need to figure out that salary thing because yes, we have messy. Salary's a nightmare. Luis Suarez getting two hundred thousand dollars a year is good business. While- well, yeah, it's great for the team, but if he goes to Saudi Arabia, he can make half a billion dollars. I guess it's like it's yeah, just, is honestly. The, the, I, I was hoping that in December they were going to try and fix it as much as possible. What a clown show! Honestly, what a clown show! They how how do you expect this team, this league, to just grow under these conditions for the teams? Let people be the Miami, the the, the Mar- Look, I love the Martins. I'm not trying to kill P- David. Don't get mad at me. Let people be the Martins and let people be the Yankees. It is what it is. We're not going to talk about who's more successful. It doesn't matter. My point is, if people want to spend more money, let them spend more money. I, I don't understand. If it if the Red Bulls want to be uh, the Marlins, let them be the Marlins. If they want to be our feeder program, let them be our feeder program. It doesn't matter. If Orlando wants to, wants to start coming out, out of nowhere, then they want to be something, that's fine. Let them be something. To but, me, I just, I, I just don't understand why they want to be so different about it. Like, weird. just follow what the best leagues in the world do just follow, you know, financial fair play rules, you know, have some, some like, reasonable premier boundaries. League, you like you don't have to be the premier league. That's not what we're talking about, but right. But the, the salary cap really just limits what the league can do as far as growing. And I understand to an extent they want to just like make it about being the homegrown team and all that stuff. But like grow up kind of like, you're not, you're not going to be home. You're not going to get homegrown people. If you're not watching spectacular soccer, it's just, I totally yeah. agree with you. It's, it's the, it's, it's the American model watch. That they're looking at. So they're used to, um, in America, guys want to go to being, Europe. Yeah. In America, we're used to being the top, the top league. So like the NBA is the top basketball league. The NFL is the top football league. The MLB is the top baseball league. So yeah. And these in look at MLB doesn't even have a salary cap, but these leagues have salary caps, but because they can afford to do it, they, they know that if they want the best players, they're going to get the best players. MLS doesn't have that, that, that advantage they're they're not the best league so to constrict yourself to paying people a limited amount of money 
you're just you're just hurting yourself. You're boxing yourself out of out of out of the best players. Yeah, I totally it, agree. It, it, it just seems so talent, naive. The homegrown talent, by the way, that what you said it, Chris, they're trying to get out of here and go to Europe, right? Why? Why? Because they have better pay. They're, they're going to have more talent. Uh, they want they want to up their talent. But how, how do those players stay here? They up the talent, up the pay. I, I, it's not hard. At least and there's the, more Liga visibility. At least, at least pay there's more three. visibility in Europe as well. Mm-hmm. I mean, here, what does the MLS have? The Apple Apple subscription, Apple TV, or whatever. That's it. That's the only way you can watch them. In Europe, I mean, they're all over the place. In Europe, we we get to see here on the weekends in the mornings, TBS, TNT, NBC, whatever you know, Peacock. So they're all they're all over the place, and you come to the MLS, and what you get, you have to pay for for your Apple subscription to watch watch a player that you want to see. It it just doesn't make any sense. They have to have Chelsea versus Crystal Palace. Like, who the hell really wants to watch that? Both teams suck. I like watching it. <laughs> yeah, no, it's just no, you don't really. It's just bizarre the way that they sort of um, run the league on like a, for weird. For weird little things, like you look at the U.S. Open Cup, like restricting, saying that the MLS is not going to be participating in the U.S. Open Cup anymore. Like that's such a weird thing to do. Like why you're taking the oldest competition in in the country and just being like, not our top flight league is not going to participate anymore. It's like saying that English teams are not going to participate in the FA Cup anymore. A competition that's been around for over 100 years. It's just such like they just continue to hamstring themselves and just like make life more difficult to grow the league when there's like very logical, obvious things to do. It could and I just shorten the master plan. It could just shorten the actual season, you know. Just just make make less. Well, games just remove season. remove the playoffs. Like the playoffs is such a yeah. American mindset, but like every other league in the entire world just does the season, table. and whoever wins, yeah. whoever's the best team for the entire season, wins the league. And then you have your Champions League or your Champions Cup, whatever you want to call it. And that's how you determine then tournament style, who is the best team in a region. But it's just, there's just so many little things that it's just like over time, they've just kind of stood their ground and it's just turned out to be like quicksand. It's well, not like actual solid ground to stand on. No, just to be devil's advocate here, I'm not totally against the playoffs. I'm going I'm to tell you why. If we would have just gone by that standard, Cincinnati would have won it, right? They won the supporter shield. Okay. That's not who won the, the playoffs. I to an extent I agree with you, but that's why you have the the Champions League or that's why you have the Champions Cup is I mean like whoever wins the league then goes against the winner of the other leagues and no, you find out the best winner of the league. Well, would have been cool if just the one game elimination. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Just I, I, don't, I also don't mind the playoff, but if we're talking about shortening the season because there's yeah. different competitions and stuff, okay, remove the playoffs. Like a competition that doesn't exist anywhere except for your league. To me, that's just – that's not even the biggest problem. The The problem is that they, they just continue to decide to piss off fans, and they continue to decide to do things differently for like the novelty of it when you should just be focused on growing the league. And how do you do that? By basically doing the opposite of everything that you've done over the last like five, 10 years. It just, even it, the con- even the concept of the draft is something. That it's, it's so weird. The it's so weird. Away from the, that American model, it doesn't work for, for soccer. It soccer. doesn't. And it's okay. Anyone that's it's worth good. it. Anyone that's worth it is already signed by the age of 14. Mm-hmm. And, and honestly, just honestly, just let let the inter and inter Miami go to Libertadores and just let, let us play against them. I want to I want to see what happens. All right, well, let's talk about games that we're actually going to play and that are already on the books before, because we can just talk for days about MLS and what they should and should not do and how to be a more competitive league in the world stage. But let's talk about friendlies that are coming up because they're just 16 days from today. We play El Salvador, uh, my motherland, in. In Miami? Do we play in Miami? I think we do. Hard work. Um, beautiful. So the 19th of January. So we're what going? You, who, I mean, I would love to go. But do you think any of the big players play? I think for a limited amount. It's a not limited, in Miami. Not a lot. Way. It's not. It's in El Salvador. It's, it's in San Salvador. In Cuscatlan. Oh, so, I, so we're still I think, going. Actually, I think that makes it more probable that, that these big guys play, especially the South Americans, Luis Suarez and, and Messi. I think that's going to bring a bigger crowd. So uh, not a lot. I mean, why risk anything? But maybe, 
you know, a few minutes, 30 minutes or something. Yeah. I say 15 minutes or less. That's fine. Well, I think we'll get into the over unders when we'll We'll make some very pretty, or or, or maybe even at the end of the game, maybe bring them in at the end of the game to finish it off or something. But I think we'll, we'll see their faces. Probably the 60th minute. (laughs) Sure. I was thinking Uh, 58th. Yeah. yeah, Okay. (laughs) Maybe the 69th. Who knows? <laughs> um, so after El Salvador, I think we get to to really like the, the main course of the friendly season. And that's when we go to Saudi Arabia. Not we, although we could also try to plan and, and go. Um, but inner Miami. Let's see how many subs Saudi we Arabia. get. Let's see how many subs we get between now and then. And we'll, we'll see if we can, we can make that's it. Right. Um, if, get, if, if you're watching 15. sub as much as you can, <laughs> all your family... <laughs> And we'll go to Saudi Arabia. And rewatch this video 20 times over at least every hour. Um, but we travel to Saudi Arabia and we play Al Hilal on the 29th of January and then Al Nasser on this on the first of February. And those two games are just gonna be like appointment television. I think they're in the middle of the afternoon for us, which is to an extent great. Um, but those are just gonna be so much fun. I don't think Messi plays in the one against Al Hilal to save himself to play balls to the wall against Al Nasser and Ronaldo. <laughs> yeah, it's and that game's gonna decide who's it. the best. No, right? I think Sorry. you're wrong. I think you're wrong. I think he plays hard both just because it doesn't isn't the first one against Neymar. Neymar's, Neymar's hurt. Oh, he he's gonna go visit he's gonna visit the bench and be like, bro, this wouldn't have happened to you if you came to Miami and replaced Robert Taylor. Also oh, the games God. are like the games are like two days, two or three days apart. So yeah. Yeah. I don't That's think my biggest concern. Ball. And after that, right after the Al Nasser game, they play like three, what, three, four, five days after that? It's February the... 1st, February 1st in Al Nasser, and then February 4th in Hong Kong. So yeah, I mean, it's just it's, it's, madness. It's, it's crazy. So I think, I think he'll alternate, Messi specifically, I think will alternate him. Maybe he plays like 10, 15 minutes against Al Hilal, same sort of concept against uh, El Salvador. And then against Al Nasser, he'll start. No question in my mind. Like they, the the whole stage is set for him and Ronaldo to walk out and just stand there and do the team anthems and all that stuff and be this whole show, and then he'll rest in the first game in China and play in the second game in China. That has to be that has to be my contract that he has to start that game against Al Nasser. Like I think when they when they formulated this tour, that's by contract that he needed to start that game. It's the whole reason for this tour. Yeah, it's Ronaldo Messi. It's probably the last time we'll get Ronaldo Messi. Well, but but ah, don't say that. Um, don't say that. No, because Late. We, I said it. we we have um we have we're getting into a um when we won last year the what trophy was it last year that we got that the we, we got into the place so for next year. Just let him, just let him the, figure it out. There's a tournament. There's a tournament that we're getting into next year. Uh, Concacaf. Yeah. Come on, I'm asking you a question. <laughs> we won the League's Cup, and that qualified us for the Kaka, Konka, the Kaka Cup. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the Konka Cup Champions Cup. Okay, and then so if we it, win that, we qualify uh-huh. for the Club World Cup. I think so that's what you were trying that. to get at. Yes, that, and I'll tell you, and I looked up the World Cup, that thing is lit. Like, if you if you see everyone that's participated in it and that's going to participate in that one particularly, I mean, you're, you're talking about who's who in, in clubs. You know that 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 team that beat Crystal Palace the other day won that trophy not too long ago. Yeah, but they've gone. F- they've, let's just say they're not the same team. <laughs> just leave it at that. They also won Champions League not that long ago. That's right. It's a long time ago. Yeah, so With I'm looking Eden forward. Hazard there. I mean, <laughs> I'm I'm looking forward to here? these to these friendlies um it'll be nice just to see some of the faces again it'll be nice to see hopefully some players that we didn't see towards the end of the season that were still recovering from injury uh hopefully get some playing time seeing what they have i mean we didn't see quarantine jean we didn't see jean mot that much there's players that like are still part of this team that were an active part of this team last season that should be healthy and ready to go by the time these friendlies start rolling around so i'm really looking forward to seeing them get some stretch and you know start building this this chemistry that we've talked about and starting to understand who's going to play where what kind of system are we going to employ you know all these questions we don't really know the answer to because like you said earlier that that came in and it was a mishmash we had no idea what he was going to do and he was sort of just playing with the cards that were dealt to him 
but now he's the one making the decisions and saying that guy needs to get off the team, bring this guy in, and this is how we're going to play. So I think there's a lot of interesting things that are going to come uh, from these matches. We're going to get a lot of information on how this team is going to look for the entire 2024 season. And that's why Gregory, I think he's out, guys. Uh, honestly, because of what you're just saying right now, he he wasn't someone that necessarily brought in, right? So it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, he's a, he's a good player, but is he a guy that, that that matches into the system? I don't know. Kamal Miller, I think, was a good player too, as you guys mentioned uh, how great he was. But and I, I don't think he's bad either. But it's just one of those things where if he doesn't match what they're trying to get to, they're trying to do, then ship him out. If I, there was a time when the rumor was Modric. I know it's not going to happen, but I wish it, a, a player like that in the middle that, that just completes the, the tiki-taka that, that we're trying to get to. Like, we were putting in Faku in there to try and, and, and make it all work. It, it wasn't going to work. That's not that he wasn't, he wasn't, he, he was out of place there. Um, so, you know, another, I wouldn't be surprised if, if we stay, stand, stand, uh, stay put with uh, Pides at center back. And and we just go after a, a some kind of wing, or or a midfielder, and call it a day. They're gonna they're gonna need some some more support in the midfield. If we're losing Gregory, we've lost that oil, and then the rest of the players are just very young. They're talented. We have Diego Gomez, we have David Ruiz, we have Crema, we have Facu. There's a lot of very promising young players. There's Jamota. I mean. There's a ton of players that that have promise, but yeah, getting getting someone that's proven talent in the midfield would be very helpful. Obviously, Busquets can command a lot in the center, but we saw his deficiencies a lot last season. Um, I don't know, I don't know if he's gonna be the guy the whole season. He played so many minutes. I agree, but there's a lot of minutes that we need to be played this season more mm-hmm. than last year. So mm-hmm. if we expect to go deep in these competitions, we need we need depth and as not just midfield definitely at in defense on the wings in the middle there there's a lot that still needs to be done and you know like i said that's why the next 10 15 days are going to be really telling as to how seriously we're going to take this season i'm hoping a lot of these I, answers will be will, a lot of these things will be answered by the time we get to the uh first preseason game i think they will i just um i just looked it up real quick because i was curious so the Ronaldo versus Messi showdown on a Thursday at 1 p.m. No Prime broadcast time. details, so we don't know. That's right. Yeah. We'll we'll Prime be live. Yeah, it's 9 p.m. For we'll be live like 10 hours after that game. <laughs> Why? You because we're we're, we're gonna fly back from Saudi Arabia. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, this would be right, an awkward guys. place for you guys to say, "Yeah, I'm not working that day." Very awkward if your employer watches. <laughs> really weird. Yeah, well, sometimes you got to do what you got to do. <laughs> Be like, oh, I got I got a meeting that day at 1. Just close the door. <laughs> Block the calendar. Lunchtime, yeah. three hours. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, uh, it, I, I'm, a, I'm happy to be back doing this. Uh, I, I honestly did miss it. I think it had been almost two months since our last episode. So it's great to, yeah. you know, hop on and, and talk shop. And uh, we'll be back next week with uh, hopefully more information, hopefully some good news to share. And, uh, you know, as we lead up into these friendlies, you know where to come by. The Heron Heads, your first stop for all things Inter Miami. And we'll catch you guys on the next one.